It stretches for nearly an entire block on Broadway. Okay, well. And entering Zabar's is a symphony for the senses. There's house roasted coffee beans, freshly baked bread, savory knishes, yes, lady. smoked meats to make your mouth water, and smoked fish that's to die for. I have a very jealous brother, son, everybody right now. It's oh good my stuff. Gosh, so good. It's good stuff. David Zabar grew up inside the store that he helps run today. So people call it Novi, Nova, Nova Scotia right. salmon. Basically, it's a, a mild cured smoked salmon. That is crazy thin slicing. We work with the smoke houses, you know, for how we want it. You know, it's a fatter fish, it's less salt, and uh, so that they give us a selection of what we want for our customer. Wow. Thank you, sir. Keeping those customers happy is what keeps them coming back to this New York institution. So good. And a philosophy passed down to David from his father, Stanley, and uncle, Saul, who inherited Zabar's from their father, Louis. It's a history detailed in the book, Zabar's, a family story with recipes published this year. It begins with a harrowing escape from Ostropolia, Ukraine, where the well-off Louis Zabarka lived until 1920, when his father was murdered by Bolshevik troops inside the family home, one of numerous pogroms that forced many Jews to flee Europe at the time. In 1922, Louis landed in New York City, shortened his name to Zabar, and reunited with the woman he'd marry, his sister's childhood friend, Lily Teitelbaum. He found work as a grocer, According to the book, Louis slept in a storage room behind the store at night, saving until he could rent a counter inside a store selling smoked meat and fish in 1934. We never knew the details before. Three generations of Zabars told us they knew little of Louis's escape. Sons Saul and Stanley spoke of his work ethic. My father was a, a tough, he was working hard. He uh, all, all wanted Saul to be uh, his right hand man. <laughs> <laughs> and Saul didn't want anything uh, until, until he died. Uh, we, we were at odds <laughs> until he died because he, he was demanding of me things that I didn't want to be. Yet when Louis died at age 49, Saul and eventually Stanley, along with their longtime partner, Murray Klein, helped lead Zabar's through years of expansion. Saul buying the fish and introducing specialty items like coffee well before Starbucks. Stanley overseeing the deli counter and the financials. As president and vice president, Saul and Stanley are still involved in the business today. I didn't mention I'm 94. <laughs> <laughs> You don't look it. And I'm, all, I'm only and 90. Exactly. Stanley is 90. And As Nora Ephron showed in her 1998 rom-com, You've Got Mail, navigating your way through a crowded Zabar's can be a challenging experience. I mean, this is the best tour ever. It helps when you have someone who knows their way around. This is why you don't need to cook in New York. Yeah, well, we make and package uh, everything. Stanley gave us a rare look inside Zabar's vast kitchen. This is behind the scenes, truly. And introduced us to a few of their 200 plus longtime employees. How many years you've been working here? 22, 25. 24. Our shopping continued. Stanley insisting on some rye bread. Would you slice a rye bread for me? One with seeds. And rugula. So, I mean, Jeff and Michelle, if you're really nice, I might bring you some of these. So, or I might eat them myself. Yeah, but not before I get a tip from a friendly shopper, Stanley's wife, Judy. You want a coat? Look, I, I mean, I, he's just loading yeah, me yeah. up. The, the bake regular much better than, than these. What? You're steering me wrong. Judy got me right. You gotta get the bake off regular. This is for Stanley. While the story of Zabar's may be extraordinary, it's also one of many. Thank you so much. That combined narrative is told at a traveling exhibition. Welcome to I'll Have What She's Having, the Jewish Deli. Jesse Kornberg is the CEO of the Skirball Cultural Center in Los Angeles, where it originated. This is footage from 1900, and this is from the Lower East Side of New York. And when you think of deli food, you are talking about the flavor of preserving food in the street. These are the Hebrew letters that spell kosher in Yiddish. Right. Slowly, over time, kasha varnishkas, chopped liver. What would be considered deli began to change. You know, salmon is not native to Poland. 
The last <laughs> sign of bagel right? was not happening there. This is a thoroughly American story. Okay. By the mid-century, Jewish delis could be found throughout the country, catering to new customers. This is the moment where that slice of Swiss cheese goes on a Reuben sandwich because somebody's <laughs> right. tasting it and they're not keeping kosher right? and they want it. Deli so mainstream, the pop culture on rye section highlights some of the many times it's been center stage in TV and film, including the iconic scene which gave the exhibit its title. Yes! yes. Oh, God. I'll have what she's having. It works if you know the reference. And it still works if you're not familiar because I definitely want to have yes. some of what you're having. Right, exactly. Yeah. Curators Kate Thurston and Laura Mart got the idea for the exhibition over a nosh like this. We met at the museum's cafe, which was transformed into Judy's Deli. It's really interesting to consider where this food came from and how it connects us to history and heritage, whether that's our heritage or the heritage of other groups that we share this country with. It's a connection found in the Zabar's family story, written by Stanley and Judy's daughter, Lori. She passed away three months before the book was published. Her daughter, Marguerite Mariscal, reflected on her mom's inspiration. She really wanted to create something that we could all look back on um, and do it at a time when we still had these two you know, incredible uh, men um, running the store. At the end of her book, Lori writes, a century after my grandparents immigrated to America, their legacy continues. I like to say that Zabar's is the longest running show on Broadway. Zabar's is New York royalty now. We don't feel that way. <laughs> no, we do have quality, but it's some kind of nostalgia. It's also a piece of New York. This space is precious. You know, people say you're a custodian of the tabernacle. Like, we are guardians of a sacred space, and I hope we all uh, maintain our commitment to keep it that way.